how long you think we're going to be? I said, I don't know, Pastor, but I think we can be out here pretty quick. I know some of y'all got meals. Some of your mothers, y'all could. Some of y'all mothers probably didn't cook. But if y'all want to go at it, maybe it be treated. I, you know, like I said, I, I think you deserve a day off. I don't think you should have to cook. But some of you know that some of our mothers are here and they can't cook right now. And we got to prepare for them. So the baton is, amen, exchanging. And so that we also learn to do the things. Amen. Pass on that knowledge. Pass on those cooking skills. Pass on the things and ask some questions. Come on. You might have to hit them up, old man. Amen. What's those uh, network channels? Some of y'all seen them. Amen. Some of those ones like Contesta and all those other good cooks. Amen. All it takes is a spark and you go on it. But whatever you decide, amen. Cooking is not just for women. It's for men too. Come on, sir. Amen. amen. I'm a pretty good yeah. cook if I can say so myself. Amen. I can make a mean lasagna. Amen. I can make uh -huh. a mean, amen, chicken casserole. Amen. I, amen. All right then. I can even make good macaroni now. Come on. And I've been, amen. Uh, uh, come on. Thanks to my glorious wife. Hallelujah. I even told a uh, uh, doctor. He had said, I, how did you gain that weight? I said, it was my wife's macaroni. God bless you. First time I hit it, it was over with. It was a done deal. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, I thought I was eating homemade I had, man, macaroni when I was getting crab macaroni out of the box. Then somebody turned me on to homemade macaroni. My goodness. Boy, you have thought I had died or what the hell? Oh, my God. Boy, I tell you, you can eat that, man. I tell you, you can microwave it on one day, come back, amen, and microwave it the second day, and it's still going to be good. Come on. That, come now, on. That's good macaroni. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody know what I'm talking about. That's good macaroni. Yeah. Amen. That's stuff you microwave on that first day, and you look at it the second day, and it's looking rough. But I'm talking about that good macaroni. Come on, church. But we thank our mothers today. Come on, amen. amen. We give them glory. Come on, amen. Right. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm blessed to have my mother. Amen. In the name of amen. Oh, yeah. I'm blessed to have her. Amen. Would it not been for her, I just don't know what it would have been or be. But I do know because of her, it's because of what mothers who are contributing to the lives of so many. Amen. amen. There are so many who are suffering. Amen. Come on. I think about all the mothers who, amen, over the course, the mothers of George Floyd and Trayvon Martin, Breonna Taylor, amen. Amen, just to name a few. All the most, like sister, even my uh, the story of the civil rights movement of Emmett Till, the mother had the courage amen. and the courageousness to go and put his facial, amen, disparities, amen, of the heinous and evil crime, amen, of his tormented body on display for the world to see the evil face to face. And because of that, people's minds begin to turn and change. But I think it all starts, amen, because of that, as you know, when it came down to women who, like those who were Trayvon Martin, and they led the back, the, uh, what they call the, the rally cry for the injustice. There are so many causes. Even now I see the, the wars that have been created, amen, and most of those, the majority are fought by men, but those men have had mothers, amen, and I, I know myself, for example, I was in combat and I was in the military and, and my mother prayed, amen, when I wasn't able to pray for me, amen, amen. and I'll never forget because I, she prayed for me, church, and she gave me back to God, amen, I always tell the story, but I'm going to tell it to you again, when she gave me back to God, amen, that set my course for a different approach, I began to see and hear God. I began to, amen, have a tug in my spirit that says that I'm looking for something better. I'm looking for something higher. Amen. And though you may not understand the power of prayer, those moms who you are, wave your hand if you know and witness the power of prayer for your children. Amen. amen. Will set them on a different journey. So you can keep looking at them in the natural. You can't keep looking at them when they are present. And you gotta look past that which is present and look on and beyond. Because God, if He looked at us as what we are right now, all was being consumed. Amen. But it's time for us to stop putting them and giving them back to God. Amen. And 
Therefore, as I say again, I stand before you, amen, as a witness. Everything that's here today is a miracle. Everything that's here today, amen, is a testament. Had I not been here, you would not be here. God, come on. But I did no glory to myself. I'm just saying because my mother, amen, interceded on my behalf. Hallelujah. And she went before the altar. She was buried with witnesses because they told her, amen, I know the account because one of the mothers of the church said, daughter, give your son back to God. And in giving your son back to God, that led my course. Some of y'all said, I don't want to be given back to God. Well, the choice is yours. Some of y'all want to continue on in sin and in darkness, but I thank God for my mama. She helped that God would open my eyes. Yeah. He troubled my spirit yeah. and led me on the path of righteousness. I didn't Amen. say I arrived. I did not say that I've gotten there, but I just say my God had not been for my mother's burden. And amen, that's the reason why I'm coming today to talk about the burden of the mother. Amen. amen. Please turn to Luke, amen, the second chapter, amen, and 33 through 35. And from there we'll be going from the book of John and 19, chapter 25 through 27. Amen. 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 God give the glory. Won't be before you long, but God's will be done. I pray that something will be said to bless you. Amen. Amen. Because if not, oh to God. Amen. My labor is not in vain. I'm going to tell you that right now. The word says it's going to accomplish what it's set for to do. When you have it, please stand for the reading of the word. Amen. amen. Just real quickly, amen. As we read from Luke, amen, second chapter and the 33th verse. Read the 35th verse. Amen. When you have to say amen. Amen. As such. And in reading, and Joseph and his mother, amen, marvel at those things which were spoken of him. 34. And Simon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yes, or yea, rather, a sword shall appears through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you, thank you right now. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all those on the side of my voice, oh God. Lord God, I decrease, you increase, Lord. We rebuke, we rebind every hindrance, every spirit, Lord. We came this morning, Lord God, but we had to do warfare because we know the enemy is busy. The somebody, amen, knows it, amen, that the enemy tried to rise his ugliness in the house of God. But we decree and declare the victory today. We decree and declare all the nonsense, amen, and disobedience and the oppositions of children in the end and error of the ways. We bind those, Lord God. We arrest you right now. We bind everything not like you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We surrender and we submit it to your authority, Lord God. We ask you to bless us and bless those, the preachers, the pastors, the evangelists, the prophets, the teachers, Lord God, the ministers who are bringing forth the word on the houses of worship today. And we ask above all, God, let somebody hear your word and be saved, be sanctified, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody desires it today, so we thank you on today. We ask your God to let thy kingdom arise and let the enemy be scattered. And all these things we do in Jesus' name. And you affirm by saying amen. Amen. I will see you in the presence of God. Amen. I've already told you we hype today. Pastor said it well. Did y'all know this pastor had on her eleven? Amen. And I got up this morning. We didn't even check with each other's attire. But I came out of the room and where I had my clothes. And then I saw that she had on the same outfit. So I said, go figure. Come on. We match it up, Lord. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. Amen. Singleness of mind. Amen. But we threw on our purple elite. Amen. Come on, yeah. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. So I thank God for her. Amen. I know she's not absent. I know she's here. She's hearing me and she's hearing everything that's going forth. Amen. But glory to God, she said this morning, she said, well, I got to work today. I said, that's all right, Pastor, but I got a little something, something for you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. It's all right. Amen. I went last night so she could do what she did. But we thank God because we're a team. We are effort. We are one. Amen. As someone says, we're a unit. Amen. No, we do. We have troubles. We have problems. But by God, we still come back at the end of the day. Amen. And assemble ourselves. Come on. Ain't nothing too hard for God that we can't get through. Amen. By all example, what you who are even designed today know this, that there are many people today in the world we live in that don't even have an opportunity to see the things you get to see in this house of worship. But glory to God, he is allowed. So on this day, I preach to you about this story of Simon. He was a devout man. And though he was of a stricken age, the God that we serve allowed him to see the day that before him and those as Mary and her husband Joseph, y'all know Mary and Joseph, came and were bringing their child up to the place, amen, to do what was customary, even to circumcision. But in this time where this young child, amen, and he was seen of Samuel, Samuel said, my eyes have seen the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even that infant child, during that time, he began to speak these things, and he spoke these things unto Mary to let her know, amen, that you not only are blessed to behold the child, is set before for the fall and the rise. Come on, somebody. Y'all might not see the comparison, but I sometimes recognize, y'all heard me say that there are things that have happened in the course of those of our lives and somebody had a mom and somebody had a child. You've seen the cases where suicide was involved. Or you've seen the cases where someone was murdered. You've seen the cases where someone was shot, amen, as an innocent bystander. But those cases, amen, involved somebody who had a child and there was a mother, amen, that bore that burden. Can I get a witness to that? Somebody say, I am glad, amen, that I want too much of a burden on my mom. Hallelujah. I took her through some changes. Yes, Lord. I took her down the road, amen, and back again. But my God, amen, I'm just so thankful to know that the burden that she bore, amen, even the things that she had to deal with in my stuff, amen, didn't cause me, amen, to leave this world. Come on, somebody. Amen. amen. Some of y'all need to look around sometimes. We get real comfortable thinking that we just vicariously going through day by day. But amen, every one of us has got an expiration on us right now. Every one of us has got a day and destiny with Jesus Christ. Every one of us has got an appointed time that we're going to stand before God and be judged. And it it's awesome time that we don't recognize that those times are right now and in the days in which we are living. But I know that Simon was speaking something that was very foreign at the time to Mary. Y'all mind you, she didn't know about those things that we have today. She didn't know all that speaking in tongues. She didn't know all that prophesying. But she heard and then and pondered these things in her heart. And in pondering what she heard and what she had, amen, been exposed to. And it goes all the way. And I'm going to share that with you as well. But I recognize that even as Mary began to ponder what Simon was saying. Amen. And this one in 35 said, yet a sword. This is where it gets rough. Amen. To the heart. A sword shall pierce through thy own soul. Come on, somebody. Amen. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Amen. It does imply that this is talking about the nation of Israel as well because many, as you know, would not receive during Jesus Christ and yet there were some who would but even the sinful nature of us who are here today, amen, in this 2022 year, that's why Mary's burden became, amen, transparent that our sins might also be seen. Somebody know the scripture where it says, hallelujah, that the word is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen. Come on. Come on. Help me out. Able to what? Huh? Yeah, cut. Amen. Cut deep. But it's, as it said, the soul and spirit and even the bone and the marrow means it's getting to the nitty gritty. 
Hallelujah. There's no sin that's not, amen, covered that's not brought to light. Even your intent and thoughts of your heart are sometimes brought to light. You may think you're getting away, but you're not getting away. You may think you're hiding, amen, your hearts, your hurts, your shame. But God and God, God has a way to bring it up to surface. Amen. Amen. Some of the very things that you may be dealing with. And I know some mothers in here, you got children, amen, and you may, amen, look and be one of those who, amen, don't have a, a, a what they call a helpmate a, or a husband, amen. But you're doing the best you can do. Amen. But you're not alone because you got a, amen, a husband. That husband, man, amen, has a vineyard. And I heard he's got mansions too. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Somebody thinks they own it on their own. I got news for you. You're not on it by yourself because God is always upholding you right now. But you got to put your trust in him. Can I get a witness, somebody? But the burden title of my message, if I didn't tell you, is the burden of a mother. Come on, I got to give some honors to those. I got to tell you that it involves the fact that this was a story that amen precepted itself on that Mary didn't know amen everything. She didn't know all the things she was looking at. And I will explain that whereas it was that the hearts come on of many, amen, would be pierced even of her own soul because Mary watched her son grow. She watched him, amen, come up. How many of you know it ain't just pertaining to sons, it's talking about daughters too. Amen. But she watched them grow and they got out on their own and they did the things they could thought they could do. And some of y'all don't understand that sometimes the biggest hurts in your life will come from your very home. Amen. Some of the biggest, amen, disappointments will come from those that you try to tell them not to go left and they still went left. Come on, they had to find out the hard way. They had to find out because they thought they was in love. Or they thought they was a man doing all. Some of them thought that they liked that they had a pie in the sky and the vision of glory and, and grandeur was just for everything was going to flow like milk and honey. But it don't work like that to the church. It don't work like that to the saints. It don't work like that to the pastor with that. Oh, it's a wake up call, ain't it? Somebody got out there, they may have found themselves like the prodigal son. Somebody found themselves like the prodigal daughter. Come on, somewhere. Hey Amen. You got freedom, but freedom ain't even free. Come on. Y'all talk with me. Freedom ain't even free. Come on. You can have a whole lot of freedom, but once you get freedom, then you find yourself lonely all over again. Sometimes you find yourself in a place, amen, where you hear voices start talking to you. Go on to end your life. Why don't you just go ahead? You ain't worth nothing. That's no kind of voice to be speaking to you. But I got news for you today. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. He's going to work with me. If you get somebody else, they don't want to show him, don't want to be around him, don't even want to confess him. I confess the Lord Jesus. He is my Savior on today. Yes. I don't know about y'all. Sometimes it's hard for people to confess when you haven't given it all. But even the way, but it starts somewhere. You got to start with something. Somebody say, you got to start with Jesus. Somebody say, I got to vocalize Jesus. I don't care. Come on, I'm out in the house. Yeah. In my faith. Yeah. Amen. But if I can say the name Jesus, yeah. Lord Jesus, that's a lot. Somebody don't know the power of the name Jesus. But there's power in the name. Wow, yes. Consider the fact that when Jesus, even we talked about it in Bible study during Thursday night, that Jesus, even when he prayed, he lets us know the example that even if Jesus was praying from the ground where he was on earth, and yet to God, God was still hearing up there. Yeah, yeah. Now I know he was Jesus, and then y'all might say, well, because he is Jesus, of course God going to hear him. But wait a minute now. He told the disciples to pray. And when he told them to pray, he told them how to pray. And therefore, if he tell you and I how to pray, should that same prayer matter also yes. that God can hear from heaven? Amen. So when we ask God to forgive our sin, yes. and we can forgive others their sins yes. of trespass against us. And therefore, when we do that, then God says that he'll honor our prayers. Yes. Oh, the prayer of the righteous avail of much. The prayers of the righteous yes. avail of much. Yes. But my God, the effectual for the prayers. Yes. Yeah. No matter oh, more. Yeah. The effectual prayer. Because see, Mary, even though she was not, amen, 
Somebody said, it looked like she was timid. It didn't look like, but see, she went on with Jesus. Amen. Mary, as you know, began to see the great miracles that he done. You saw the five, amen. Come on, here, dog. The 5,000 being fed. Two fish, five loaves of bread. Can you imagine what it would be like if you saw all that and you as a mother see your child going out and doing all these great things? The notoriety of everybody seeing them, putting them in high esteem. Can you see the fact that Jesus would lay your hands on the sick and they were recovering? Can you see some of your children, amen, going on to do great things in life? Amen, going on to do scholarly and academic things. And they got positions, amen, in corporations and all the world. But come on, somebody. You may not see it right now, but there yes. are some leaders in this church. Yes. There are some yes. entrepreneurs in this church. Yes. There are some people who got businesses yes. in this church. And I'm one of them. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I always hustle. Amen. I ain't trying to talk about hustling, believe it. But I thank God that He gave me what I gave. Amen. I'm motivated. I'm governed by a different set of gears. Some people say, Amen. If what happens if you go, Pastor? Then somebody else better take up the Amen the mantle. Come on. Because see, if you're not gleaning and learning from the others, then there's a problem. Amen? That means the vision stops right now. Come on, if you talk about my character versus my actions, and then you're talking about my expertise and my wisdom and my knowledge, those are totally separate things. That's why they say sometimes you can learn from somebody. You might not like them, but you can learn from them. Can you not, church? Amen? You don't like a lot of people in your job, but you still can learn some things. You don't like everything your school teacher tells you, but you can learn some stuff. You may not have a life of it, man, when you go down and some of y'all know what I'm talking about when, when you got to deal with the public, amen, in such a way that just like the church is a public entity and so forth, but yet private in so many ways, exclusive, exclusive, amen. But then you deal with people. But I tell you today, Mary, that burden as she bore, as Jesus' mother, Mary began to process. Yeah. One day they came up, and there was accordingly a festival, a wedding. She turned and said to her son, they have no wine. And then Jesus looked at her and said, oh, what is that? And says, my time is not yet. Say so. And yet she said to those Whatever he say, do, do it. That's right. Do it. Amen. Do it. Oh my God. Listen to the man. Yeah. There you go. Listen to the mama. Yeah. See, some of y'all will be mad. Right. You know, I'm going to tell you something. My mother would always give me some advice. And, and amen. I used to have this old uh, man who used to stay down our street at the bottom of our dirt road before we came paid in the old Williams room. And I told her, I said, Mama, I said, this guy, he has on six or seven layers of pants and shirts. And he don't smell all that good. If I got to get him in my car, he's going gonna, gonna to have to get paid. But my mama said one day to me, she said, son, don't, don't charge him. And I, and I listened to my mama. I said, okay, mama, I won't charge him. And then I remember another time when I was smoking I said, you need to put down cigarettes. I said, okay, mom, I need to put down the cigarettes. But you know, my mama didn't never tell me to stop drinking. She did tell me to stop drinking. She did tell me to stop drinking. Well, until that day happened and I was, my head and stash was out there in the doghouse. And mind you, my doghouse was really big. But I, I don't know if it was designed for that reason, but whatever the case be, there was where I could put behind my dog, had plenty of room to move. So he wasn't, you know, trying to be inconspicuous. But somehow or another, my mother came one day and found him. And I tell you, my mama could find every and everything. I don't care how good I hit him. Even if I had my stash, she would find him. I don't know what it was. But see, sometimes you don't understand. Your mama's, amen, just built on a different level. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. When you, especially when you're young, you think you're getting away with stuff. You ain't never getting away with nothing. 
What you're trying to do has already been done, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Every feeling, every emotion you think you're feeling right now, that puppy love, come on, they know about it. You might learn, but you gotta talk. You better talk before you get out there and get shipwrecked with that young man or that young woman. Come on, have you out there? Amen. Have you all given up your body for no reason? For what reason? Amen. Just to have you get the stretch marks and he going on by this life, doing what he doing, and there for what? Amen. There's a point of reference to every mother to burden that they have to bear. Even when it's not good, even when it is good, amen. That's just like what it says in Proverbs, amen. As my son, keep thy father's commandments. And even as a mother, he says that keeping the law is such. And therefore, just like we today, we got to hold to what we've been taught. We got to hold to some things, amen. And I say in the Lord. Come on, church. Because if I don't say in the Lord, some of y'all been taught wrong. Amen. Some of y'all might have been told some things. Amen. But I say in the Lord. Now you back it up with scripture. It's all good. But I want to share that Mary, church, the burden that she bore. It came to the point, y'all know that Jesus was yet crucified. Jesus was, amen, already. It was decided, amen, a long time ago. When he did that act, when Lazarus, amen, was raised up from the grave. Hallelujah. He couldn't deny it because there were too many witnesses. And the, amen, and the story was spreading like wildfire. So just before that time of when the Passover, Jesus went up into the city. They laid out palms and they celebrated his name. And I imagine that mother, amen, Mary, she was feeling real mighty good, mighty proud of her son. Mighty good that God has allowed all these things to come through her womb. Mind you that she was a virgin up until his other brothers. You don't know his, he had brothers. Y'all know James. Amen. Y'all know Jude. Come on. Y'all know that he had brothers, amen, and sisters. But my God, before she, amen, knew a man, which was her husband Joseph, amen, that she conceived, which was of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I know that's a hard thing to swallow sometimes when we live in such a natural world. But when I ask the question to a lot of people about how you can discern and understand and identify those things that are spiritual, but yet you can identify with the sins and evil and all the other things that are happening in the world. See, people are training up their children to perform witchcraft and be warlocks. And see, what we don't know as Christians, see, there are people out there whose children literally are casting spells. Come on, some of y'all see Harry Potter's. And y'all watched the movies, and you probably thought those little satanic little, amen, words that were crossed and said was innocent. But I kid you not. Go check it out. Amen. Some of y'all bought CDs and other things out there in the world. Come on. Somebody remember some Bones, Thugs, and Harmony. Maybe back before when they had their plastered up with an album, amen, CD. And then if you look in the mirror, it pronounced a curse. But there are people today. That are doing these things yeah. at a young age. Yeah. They say train up the child the way they should go. So when they get old, they won't depart. But some of y'all allow the school systems to train them up. And you know where that's getting us. Hallelujah. You know some of y'all allow other folks to train them up. Come on, amen. But you know where that can get you. But it's time for mothers to be the burden bearer. Yeah. It's time for them to step up in the place. Yeah. Amen. To be accounted and be held accountable. Yeah. Right. Because the burden of the mother, amen, is the quintessential part of those who are children that come forth. Amen. And I'm telling you today, we wouldn't have some of this nonsense going on in the church today if parents just be parents. Come on, you, you, you come to show up if you want to. My bell coming with me or my switch coming with me. How many of y'all not afraid? Come on, somebody. Well, because I know what I was going to get if I get to it, but I won't go and try to get out of character in the church. But let somebody tell somebody today, amen. Oh, you know, they're not going to be. 
mess them and they might do this and they do that. Let them do it then. That's right. Hey. Tell it. That's right. Tell the truth. Man. Whether it be obedient to obey God or obey man. That's right. Obey God. God That's said, right. beat them, they won't die. Come on, somebody. Mamas, they won't die. I know some of y'all tender hearted. I know some of y'all don't want your children to go through nothing. I know, but I want you to know that Mary dealt with the same thing. Jesus was on the cross. He had to die. He had to go through all that suffering. You think she saw that and that man wasn't touched by that? You think that she felt in some kind of way that she couldn't have felt angry? And man, I think about all the mothers that they just lost a child. I think about all the mothers, amen, I hear these sisters killings, amen, gang violence and all these simple murders all around. Somebody, you first thing you hear, there was a good child, but good Amen. Don't cut it no more. You got to tell your child about Jesus. You want them to be saved. But somebody said, well, I mean, that just, I can't talk about Jesus like that to them. Well, when are you going to talk about it? Because the world showed up and talked to them about smoking weed, having sex. Amen. And talk to them about everything under the sun. But you're afraid to talk about Jesus to them. You're afraid to have that conscious conversation about the intimate things of God. Come on. Because why? Because where are you been? But God said, where you been ain't where you are. Come on, somebody. God said that you be not ashamed. I'm not ashamed with you. Then if you're not ashamed, then you are a new creature created in God's good works. That you walk there in. If you're showing it up right this, then they ain't got no choice but to hear you out. Come on, somebody. But every day is a walk with God. Every day, amen, is a challenge. But my God said, he will supply. And as I say on and I read coming into John, amen, y'all, if you will, John 19, 25, amen, this was a time when Jesus was on the cross, he bore that cross, he bore it, amen, and Cephas was there, and he held it up, it was blood all over him, the thorns, and even the centurions, they was ready to cast lots, even for his vestue. They was casting lots to see who would get what. Can you imagine as a mom when you see your child either being hanged or being shot senselessly down in the street? Can you imagine the saying that Mary was feeling? The same heinous act ain't no different in as it was then and now. There are things that are happening, but my God, hallelujah, Jesus had, as he said in 25, now there stood by the cross Jesus, his mother, and his mother, sister Mary, and the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Hallelujah. And 26 says that when Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by, he loved, that you heard what it said, whom he loved. And he said to his mother, woman, and it wasn't disrespectful. It wasn't that he was saying or making her less. But it was in a term of endurement. He said, Behold thy son. And yet at the same time, 27 says, And then he said to his disciples, Behold thy mother. To interpret is to say, Mama, behold, look at me. And then to those the disciples, Look at my mom. And then Jesus said, And he pointed out in that hour where the disciples had said, they took her to her, to their own house. See, Jesus couldn't ask his brother. Ain't that funny? He had to ask them because you know what? They were all still scattered. The only one that was bold enough to go up there, amen, with the Mary, it was the women. That's right. Oh, come on, amen. They didn't care. Isn't that something? A mama don't care how old you get. They don't care if you're in prison. They don't care amen, if you did a crime. They still gonna be your mom. Unconditional right. love. Come on, other condition of acceptance. Who wouldn't want a God like that? That he put his spirit into our mothers. That he put a, amen, an ounce. What mother would take, amen, and cast her children off and send them on with someone else? But my God, I look at this, and yet Jesus told his mother, Behold thy son. And yet she, at that time, going back to what it says, that the hearts of many shall be pricked because of you this day, my Mary. Same as when we don't want them to fall, but they got to fall. Same as when we want to tell them to do what is right, they do what is wrong. But there comes a time 
of age and accountability. Where your amen days where you are sitting on the coattails of your mom and sitting on the wings of your amen your mom are no more. You got to get it for yourself. And therefore, if you are right now at that point of your life, now's that time that you to start asking questions. Now is that time for you who are young to stop knowing that that bird of your mother's bed because she's, amen, she's, like I said in Proverbs 31, she's the one, amen, that does no harm. Amen. And she should do no harm to you. She should have your best interests because she cares about you. She shows you her work ethic, amen, that she gets up day in and day out doing what's needed, even if she's tired, even though she may be hungry to feed you, but yet she's trying to get you so that you can have a better life than she had. I wish I could get a witness that got real quiet up in here. Maybe I'm talking to a man in the choir. Maybe y'all already know, but I don't know. But I'm just saying the burden that this is coinciding with the fact that with Mary and her burden, that she bore and the burden that you bear as a mother is they the same. And sometimes if we as mothers as well, it's a wake up call in the church. It's a wake up call because we ain't always been true. Because there are errors that we all gonna make. Somebody say, I made some errors. Come on, amen. Amen. Church, we mothers, we follow everybody's gonna make errors. We don't have a master plan. If we didn't get it from our parents, the high the world, we're gonna get it from anywhere else. But God, but the God is the master plan. He's the blueprint for how to raise a young person. He's the blueprint for how to teach them in the way. He's the blueprint because he teaches us even through Mary and her suffering. That even in all the things that happened and went down, that amen, that he still was there. Amen. Hallelujah. The hearts of many. I'm closing out, but I want you to understand today. I hope that y'all who are mothers will appreciate today. Amen. I try to give alms to those. I try to share, amen, a little something, amen, because I realize that everything that has led to this land, to this, the movements, to all the, amen, from civil rights, if it had not been for the women, hallelujah, come on, I think Beyonce had a song, somebody tell me if I'm right or wrong, but somewhere she said the women kept the tempo. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. See, y'all think I ain't woke, huh? Just because I don't listen to it, I don't subscribe to it, don't mean I don't hear it whisper out. Don't mean I don't know. Some people just, I mean, I don't know what that is, but let's just get 100. Amen. Amen. I live in a world, I can listen to elevator music all day long, but that don't mean I'm tuned out. Amen. 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 I know, I do know. Amen. I don't try to go about, but see, I process differently. See, some of y'all, y'all listen to music and all those things, and, and y'all go to the beat of the drums. I try to hear what the words they sing, because I'm on a different level. Amen. I want to see what's been taught to the young people. Right now, there's a lot of mess out there. That's why we got to govern ourselves to be the watching eye over our children, and the governing eye over their phones. And, they, and everything that they tend to do and want to get into. Either on TV or video. Too many, too many opportunities for too much to be cut and let loose. Man, I know you want to get a cat nap every now and then. You shouldn't have to. Like my mama used to do some days. She used to bring us into a room we had to sleep with. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Had to go in there and sleep with mom. Lay down and go to sleep. Shut up. <laughs> but now we'll let them go out to the home to the home device they be out the door hanging out on the corners on the street but mothers that's your burden church mothers that's your burden some of y'all know we, we've already gone through it happened with church some of y'all already know you done been through it already but glory be to God God didn't let nothing happen to them God allowed them to go on and do great things. God allowed them to, amen, graduate. God allowed them, amen, when they never said they weren't going to make it in high school. God allowed them to make it. God allowed them to complete their education and go on and do great things. I just thank God because that burden of mom, that mom burden that we oftentimes neglect to see, and we need to appreciate our moms. Amen. 
I know some sons right now that haven't seen their mom. Some of those who haven't seen, amen, don't appreciate their moms. But one day, like Pastor Gail said, one day they're going to be out of here. And then you're going to wish you could see them. And all that stupidity about the grudge and all the resentment you was holding is going to be done away with. You ain't going to have nobody else to be hating on and resentful to. It's just going to be you. But mind you, just like they said, point the finger at you before you start pointing the finger at them. Amen. And therefore, my message over today, God bless you mothers and have a smile on you. And at this time, there be any just reason, if there be one today that knows God the Lord and you want to recommit yourself to the Father and Jesus Christ. If you have made, amen, a confession, but you just said, I'm afraid because I keep going back into the world of which I cannot get free. But I want you to know by faith that while the Bible said faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Stand with God because God, he's still your mom. He's still my mom. God is mother because he's kind. He's compassionate. He's loving. He's a mother to the motherless. He's a father to the fatherless. So on today, if you have, as the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if thou shalt believe in our heart and confess with thy mouth Jesus Christ, they said, thou shalt be saved. As you all know, come on, say it, church, as with the heart, man believing, it is counted to what? Right. Right. Hallelujah. And with the mouth, salvation. So on today, if you say these words, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, help me. Lord, I come before you right now. Bless you forgive me. Cleanse me that I may be made whole. Everything I've done, everything that God has been going on in my life, I lay at the altar right now. Lord, I'm yours. I surrender my will for your will. Lead me, guide me. Purge me like yes, that I might be wise. And just so, in Jesus' name. We thank God for the media. We thank God for each and every one on today for every pastor, pastor mothers, mothers, evangelists, mother prophets, amen, mother ministers, mother teachers. We thank God for each and every one upholding the blood stain. Y'all realize that if it wasn't for the mothers today, there won't be no assembly of the church. Amen. 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 All the men that I know, most of them are either masonry, tribes, or on the street, uh -huh. drinking liquor, court, sugar daddy, uh -huh. all that and above. Yeah, yeah. But in the church, the women are still here. Yeah. So that means something yes, to those who say women yeah. can't preach, women can't teach, women can't do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Women have done it. Women are doing it. Yes. So what's the problem? Right. I don't care where I got to get it from as long as I can get it. Yes. It, was, it was my mama that got me to the Lord. Amen. So there has to be a significant reason for that burden that my mama bear that burned on me that brought me this far. If not, none of this would be here. Yes. You and I would have never met. You understand what I'm saying? Right. We would have never met. I would have never known Virginia. I would have never known who you were. None of this. My wife. None of this would have happened. That's right, man. All with God. Don't oh. you see? How do you see how? Let me see how you interconnect the things in the world. Yeah. And how things start to roll over in your mind. And you start thinking, my God. Yeah. Just by sheer impulse of yeah. things that fate had it that I would end up in this city.